the Bibbles. J Dog back to answer more goddamn questions. Before we get the goddamn questions though, I figured I'd show you two goddamn dog approved fucking vinyls that came through. I picked up my goddamn self. No hells didn't pick them up, but it's the kind of metal that I like seeing goddamn come out. Um, as you guys all know, I like the demos and shit like that coming out on vinyl CD reissued. And this first one is Lobotomy. Swedish death metal band from the early 90s. Well, m mid to early 90s. And the albums I always thought were pretty good, but kind of like, oh, it's more like, yeah, you know, this again. So it sounds like Grave. The, this is just their two demos. And uh, the first one is When Death Draw Nears, their demo, 1990 demo. Uh, that demo is good, but it's a little bit... Um, this doesn't have the, uh, the punch to it. Like, um, kind of like uh, Mega Slaughter. Mega Slaughter's album is much better than their fucking uh, demos. They did two demos or one demo. Whatever, it's on the CDLP. Dog owns it, of course. But I thought, like, a lot of times bands' demos are better, in which case, for example, the Bondi is. For example, the, but the second demo, Against the Gods, that's the best demo on here. It's the longest one, too. Uh, the uh, When Death Draw Nears is just three, uh, three songs. And then... Um, the um, Against the Gods is five, six, seven songs. So it's majority of it. But then I tell you, Vic Records usually puts out shit that I like. And uh, dog sales pitching. Dude, I think we only got like five of these like at the moment. So I could give two shits. If I want to suck a sales pitch, yeah, I'll goddamn show you. You want a sales pitch? Here's a sales pitch. Yeah, go please buy. Get out, get rid of. Uh, what's something that annoys the fuck out of me on the shelves? Horn of the Rhino. Go but go go search Horn of the Rhino. Name tells me everything I need to know. Well, I didn't even listen to it. Why the fuck would I would have named that goddamn dumb? But put it in the comment box. You know Horn of the Rhino? Maybe it's the goddamn greatest thing. Fuck you talking about dog? It sounds like Attic. It's fucking amazing. In that case, I'll check it out. But I, I just figured it sucked. And it doesn't sell for shit. It's even got a dick load on Cosima. I will say this though. Goddamn, is that LP nice as fuck looking? Uh, comes with this big outer box. It's look it up. You want to fucking help? you want to make the dog do goddamn backflips? Go go order Horn of the Rhino. There's a sales pitch. That sales pitch. This is just shit that I'm actually a fan of. Like to see come out and actually bought another as well. We only have a few left. These flew out the door each time. This uh, Death Shall Rise. They've been putting out some good shit. Is the uh, unanimated? This is the demos. The good shit. Because I remember the owls being very eh. They're okay. Uh, Darkness Shall Rise, I showed it off. They did the Immortal demos. Immortal demos, Desultory, Unleashed. Oh, uh, picked them all up, of course, on colored vinyl. I hope he does, uh, he, on the Immortal, maybe it's just the Immortal. He did a picture disc as well, which I picked that up. I was hoping he was doing a picture disc on the, uh, did he do a picture? Uh, yeah, I don't think he did a picture disc on the Unleashed and the Desultories. Or if he did, we didn't get them in. We just got black and colored vinyls in. I think it was black and white, some of those as well. And uh, picked up a white vinyl of each of those. And I think he did another that I liked. I think there was another that he did do that. I wasn't a fan of that. I didn't care about. But these unanim this unanimated demos, this is good. Swedish death metal demos, too, from uh, what year is they? Uh, doesn't. I know it's early 90s. Well, more than probably on the insert. I'm going to pull it back out. But nonetheless, I mean, again, this is the shit I'm talking about, and especially for you young guys watching. Young guys and hopefully girls, too. Hopefully it's not just a complete sausage fest over here. Um, that want to be educated. Grant, I never owned those demos either. Lobotomy, I owned a couple of their albums. Might even still have them. I just remember being like, oh, another Swedish death metal band. It was around the time, but even though those, Lobotomy, I got those like in the early 2000s. And that's what I was saying. Like, I, I that was at that time when I picked up those Lobotomies. I concluded that, like, we're talking, this is probably 05, 06, somewhere in there, and I picked those up. Jesus Christ, this again? And then there were, there's more bands coming out now in 2024, 2022, 2020. What the fuck do we need another goddamn sweetest death metal sounded band? Again, unless you got, the only reason you should be writing a sweetest death metal album at this point, that sounds like a tomb, grave, dismember, any of the goddamn above, is you are legitimately saying to me, we have better songs than Left Hand Path. We have better songs than Like an Everflowing Stream. 
And that's a goddamn tall fucking statement, homie. We got better songs than that Poser Carnage album. You're saying that. Because otherwise, if unless you have better songs, that means if you wrote some damn, damn good songs, then it's worth coming out. So, oh, shit, these songs are so enjoyable, even though it has the same goddamn guitar sound, same sound as for the last 30 goddamn years and how many bands come out. There is no fucking reason to own it. And that's why a majority of the new bands, they don't. The demos are the best from all these bands. Demos, first albums, etc. Go back to the oldies. You don't need these goddamn new, these new bands. You just don't need them for the most part. The only ones, I mean, that I think that are really good is the best one out of all of them is In Trails. But even their last two albums were a little bit of a downgrade. I do like them. But the first four, in my, my opinion, the first four are, are mandatory Swedish Death Metal albums. Again, they were super late to the game. The way I best described uh, when I first heard Entrails, I heard them when the first album came out, of course, God damn it, Tales from the Morgue, is I'm like, this sounds like the first Grave record, but with a little bit more melody. That was the best way I could describe it. That's how I described it when it first came out. I think it was on the FDA records. It was before they were on any Metal Blade records. The first thing that drew me in was the, was the name, the logo, and the goddamn album cover. That looks death metal as fuck, and it, and it was great. Songs like Euthanasia on there, Blood Red. It's fantastic. But the first four, I mean, on the fourth album, uh, the song Epitome of Death is definitely one of the goddamn best songs. After that, I mean, it's kind of like, ah, I, I complete the collection. I mean, they're good, but there's kind of, it is kind of more, they're in that category where the songs weren't as strong to where it's like, eh, more Swedish death metal that if you love the genre, cool to get it, but you don't need it. You got the first four, you, yeah, in my opinion, those are songs you need. Um, Another band is Demonical, but they're hit or miss. To me, they got some really good songs, but then some of it is just more, oh, okay, more Swedish death metal. I've said it before, Towards Greater Gods on their Chaos Manifesto album. That is a fantastic song. And on some of their later, I, that was a band that got uh, better because like they're, they're, they're very early albums, like Hellsworn and uh, what is the other one? Um, the first two or so. It, th that was more, okay, Swedish death metal, I heard. It's fine. Later Sentinex, same thing. More, more Swedish death metal I heard. Fine. Uh, I kind of signed out with Set Next after um, the album that we put out. We put out the vinyl years ago, and even that one's not my favorite. The Prophecies, Decadence Prophecies. I like it. That's the last one I own, and I kind of signed out after that because none of it sucks. It's all decent. I listened to a couple others, their comeback records and shit like that. I'm just like, just more Swedish death metal I don't need. But Helvergrades, great. Uh, Diabolical Desolation, like those are those are great. First album's like a good Swedish death metal, but it's it, they didn't own, they didn't have their own sound at that point. Where they kind of like, not that I wouldn't say they ever had their own sound. They kind of always sound, the other bands that sounded like them. But the first record is kind of like, oh, this again. Uh, but it's good. So, the monocle, like I said, is hit or miss. But some of their later albums have some extremely good songs. Like stand out. Like if there was a if there was a, a mainstream death metal radio. And they were the band, the it band. They're playing them where you can obviously hit like hard rock bands, right? The Van Halens and shit with like, running with the devil, even though songs fucking homo as hell. But that's one of their hits, right? It would be easy to listen to Monocle, in my opinion. Like here's the hits, as opposed to some albums like I don't know, every song's pretty goddamn equal. So they're kind of that goddamn boat. So again, yeah, whoever the new, I don't even know who the mo most new hype. Swedish death metal band is in the last 10 years. I guess there's nobody that's overly hyped. Unless there's something I'm forgetting. But, yeah, a lot of it's like, what the fuck do I need this? I mean, we, we get grab, grab these awesome demos that are coming out from anything from 87 to like 93. It's more than likely going to be better than the shit that's coming out today. Almost every time. And there's going to be exceptions. Exactly. I'm going to like it. There's definitely exceptions, but but it's very few and far in between. If you wanted to bet the odds, you'd be pissed off fucking anything in the 87 to 93. Anything that came in that time frame, some of the bands on there were bad albums by 93. Yeah, they were licking balls big time. So don't take me out of context. I'm saying any of the bands that were a little later or whatever put out demos, hence the goddamn kind of like lobotomy. They're a little bit later. That first demo was 1990 and Nihilus demos were 87. I mean, people don't even realize this. As far as all the uh, biggies, the band, well, it's brave. But they were initially called Corpse. They were around before the Nihilist. At least they had the demo out first. The Corpse demo was 1986. Three songs. Fan fucking tastic goddamn demo. Dog owns on a boot, of course, goddamn. It's owned it officially. I think it's on the grave uh uh 
double disc, double LP uh, that Century Media did. I'll give them a nice, give them credit. They did put the uh, good job on that. So I think they called the Corpse demo, the Future Faction Side Project Van demo. Um, the Corpse was around. That was, that was, out, that was out even before the uh, Nihilus demos. And the reason they changed their name from Corpse because they wanted to get rid of their that story is they wanted to get rid of their bass player. They didn't want to tell them because they're just kids. So they're just like, oh, Corpse broke up. So they started a new band called Grave. But that is Grave. It's just a different name. Just like Mantis is death. So if you don't have that shit. It's corpse demos, Grave demos, Nihilist demos, Carnage demos and albums, Left Hand Path, Like an Everflowing Stream, A Decent and Obscene, Where No Life Dwells, Into the Grave. Uh, if you don't have that shit, dude, you got, there's no reason to buy the shit today. Zero, zero. Because there's, there's nothing coming out today. I promise you, that's from Sweet, that's better than that. So, just a goddamn education listen. I mean, the old guys are probably bored, fucking stiff, goddamn uh, picking their head off off the goddamn counter, for listening to this shit. Like, yeah, no fuck, who doesn't know that? <laughs> Dude, yeah, I've, I've had kiddos come over here and say they haven't heard of this member. Never heard of them. Holy fuck, ski. Anyways, first goddamn question. P question from Joe Guthman. What's up, J-Dog? It's been a while. But after moving and a trip to the Bahamas, I'm back with a paid ski. Mm -hmm. Keep them coming. Expect more in the future. I sure hope so. What are your top five favorite death metal live bootleg albums? I hope all is well. Cheers. P.S. I know people give you shit for mispronouncing, but you are one of the few people to pronounce my last name right. So thank you. Guthman, is that how you pronounce it? Uh, I probably got it wrong this time, right? I probably said it once on right on accident. Um... I mean, shit, there's a ton of really good ones. So live boot LPs, uh, definitely in there is the Cannibal Corpse unreleased death board LP, double LP. It's like the last, I, I, from what I've heard, I, I don't know, you can can't tell, it might be like a Slayer Live Undead where the audience is fake. I don't know, but it sounds amazing. It's uh, theoretically, if, it's a, if it is real show, it's, I think it's like supposedly look like over in Russia. And um, at least that's just the rumors I've heard. Uh, it's over in Russia, and uh, it, it's the last two are obviously the Chris Barnes. But the sound quality is fucking amazing. Uh, Merciful Fate, First Sacrifice, 12-inch picture disc. Primarily because it's the first uh, Merciful Fate show, and the, uh, the, 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 the image for the picture disc. Badass as fuck. Super early goddamn King Diamond uh, image photo from the 80s when they used to bring out the blood vials, etc. Um, King Diamond live box set of hell. What's really cool about that? It's a five. The dog again. Dog owns all these, of course. Live box set of hell is five LPs and it's two shows. The first three LPs is the very first King Diamond show from '85, so that's cool. And then there's another show in there from '87. I'm almost positive the same show, but there's a bootleg CD that came out even years prior to it. Is uh, it was called Joker Up My Sleeve, which is a dumbass title. I don't know what's called why it's called that, but it's the uh, same tour that for, for King Diamond Abigail tour, and I think it's like one, two, three days apart from the official King Diamond. It's called King Diamond Abigail Live '87 tour. I'm sure you guys all know what I'm talking about. There's an LP, CD, cassette, whatever. It's, it's an official live album that came out. The hilarious part is, dude, the boot, the set is way better. The set is way longer, it sounds better, and the commentary in between songs, King says way cooler shit. So it's funny, like, again, boots are our best. The set that got bootlegged, that's just days apart, it, it destroys the official release. Destroys it. It's like, if you had both, there's nobody that would disagree. They're like, oh, dude, this, this fucking official one sucks. I was like, it's got like half the songs. When I say half the songs, I mean, maybe not literally half, but it's for sure, like four or five songs less. It gets significantly shorter. And I'm pretty sure they did that because they don't want to make it a double LP, goddamn cheapos. Um, so you're missing half the songs or a good chunk of them. King doesn't say nearly as cool shit in between uh, tracks and the sound quality is better on the boots. Slobber all over the goddamn place. So that show is in the box set, live box set of hell, along with the first show. So that's a super cool goddamn uh, boots. Uh... Of course, you got to put a deicide in there. A ton, ton of cool deicide and something like Carcass, probably. Carcass has a lot of cool boots. Deicide, the live murdering your god, is probably the best. 
because it's a show from the first album era. Super limited. Dog owns it, of course. Cool ass cover art. Really good sound quality. And Glenn's voice is the same type of vocals as it was in the first album before they changed on Legion. So it's really cool to get another recording. And he says tons of hilarious shit between songs. Yelling at the uh, crowd. Uh, basically calling a bunch of pussies. Yeah, put your makeup back in your purse. And get up here or something. So there's a lot of really cool shit. Okay, you wouldn't know if you don't buy boots. Your poser ass is just fucking... Dude, only posers listen to studio albums only. And fucking... You, then you're an ultra fucking poser if you just YouTube shit. If that's if all, you're, you're a semi poser if all you all you listen to is uh, studio albums, but physical copy. Ultra ultra poser if you fucking own nothing and just listen to albums. That's just listening on YouTube. That's complete fucking poser shit in my goddamn opinion. Again, a, a goddamn true fucking fan, a diehard would 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 want this shit. Has it and knows it. But yet, we all get lumped in the same goddamn club of who's a poser and who's a true fan. People coming over here, you know, or, or you bumping them at the gym. I'm a cannibal fan. So you're putting yourself in the exact same league as yours fucking truly. But meanwhile, that guy, he owns one shirt. Can maybe name me. I'll even just be generous and say he can name five songs. But you got this guy over here who owns every single album, CD, LP, picture disc, owns boots out the fucking ass, audios, and to tell you the history of the band and what, what sets they played and stuff, shit like that, because I own it, listen to it. I've fallen on 20 plus years, but some, it's just, it's, see what I'm saying? Like, we'll be like, what, what's the problem? It's like, because it's not even the same level, dude. When you're somebody that's ultimately passionate about something and somebody's being put on the exact same, it's like saying two guys play baseball. One guy plays out in his fucking backyard, just playing catch with his fucking kid, and somebody else plays in the goddamn uh, the pro leagues. And they could be put on that. Both baseball players. It's like, dude, it's not even the same fucking thing. He's not even, they're not even in the same goddamn league. That's the way I see it. So it's kind of insulting is what it is. Another reason why goddamn posers need to just be thrown out, crushed, and destroyed. Um, trying to think there's some uh, carcass. Um, is it called Fermenting Burning Head? I think it's called. Reek of Putrefaction Era Show. So the fact that it's from Reek, and I remember having pretty good sound quality. That's awesome. So that's a good one. And to piss all the fucking people off, one of my favorite boots is uh, Cradle of Filth, Scars and Stripes. It was from the 99 tour? I think it was the tour that I saw them on, actually, to be honest with you. That sounds really fucking good. So, and I always love the uh, low vocals that Danny does live. I think it's, I think his vocals live sound better than on album because he can't, like, polish them up. God damn, slobbering all over the goddamn place. Fucking looking gay as fuck for Danny over here. He can't polish them up, and his deep growls that he does just sound fucking awesome live. Much better than they do on the album. So, that's another one. Good luck getting those, goddammit. Dog owns them all, of course, goddammit. You know what? Skip some of his goddamn paid skis. People like the formula. Like, you should do a, uh, some pay, paid skis and then some uh, channel questions. So, we'll pick up today. We've been, we can, see, we've been hitting the goddamn comments box fairly often lately. This is in today's video. It's, it's got only 131 comments so far. Are you a sound engineer or a metalist, brah brah? Mm hmm. Search for some goddamn question marks, something good, goddammit. Andy Barker. Would the dog ever go to Venice Beach, California? Arnold Arnold bodybuilding with Tookie Williams and Lou Ferrigno? No, not really. I mean, uh, if I had an opportunity to meet Arnold and it was convenient, I would. But would I wait three hours in line or something to get a fist bump? No. But if it was. Would you hang out with Arnold and have dinner with him? Yeah. I mean, of course, if that was an offer. Um, I will say this, though. Uh, somebody that if, if, like, people say, yeah, if you had a celebrity to hang out with for a day, who I would probably hang out with. I'm not even as big of a fan as Arnold or something. He just seemed like he'd be a cool guy to hang out with. And we'd have shit in common. It would actually be The Rock. I'd hang out with him one of his Sundays where he has his, that's his cheat day. So, so I'll see if I can, I'll just be like, yeah, what's your, I'll eat the same goddamn cheat meals you do. See if I can hang with you. See if you can put down more goddamn food. Go to the gym with them and train. That to me would be a good time. And he seems like a funny guy, fun guy to hang out with. So as far as a good time, if I can only hang out with one Hollywood celebrity, like I would hang out with The Rock over the Arnold. Plus a lot of things I'd want to ask Arnold too is uh, I would like a lot of people I'd like to meet. There's a lot of top pro beer bodybuilders, some of them uh, retired, et cetera. I wouldn't meet or I wouldn't do that if that offer was there. Because like everything I'd want to ask, they wouldn't give me an honest answer anyways. And Arnold would be that. Arnold would definitely be in that goddamn category. 
this is, I was like, I don't, I just, I'm not even going to ask because I know you're not going to give me an ass answer. So I have kind of no, like no interest. Otherwise, like, what the hell do I want to hang out with an 80 year old man for? So I think The Rock would be more fun. Like, I'd have a better goddamn time. No homo. Wilson here. Rest in peace, Paul Diano. Yeah, I heard he did kick the bucket today, huh? Which, you know, again, Ozzy's outliving everyone, man. I don't know how the fuck that's even possible, goddammit. Distribute a call point. So, dog, when the hell is the Walmart of Metal going to get the new Saint album in stock, brah? The day they actually follow their goddamn name and stop being dumbass Christians and fucking actually start worshiping Satan the way they should be under their goddamn name. Serious answer? I don't know. Sea Dog does the stock. And I imagine we get it. We get all the we get the rest of all their mid as fuck albums. Most overrated heavy metal band of all motherfucking time, my goddamn opinion. Attic sends Satan home on a stretcher. Fuck it, I said it not goddamn man. Dude, it's, uh, Satan's got one goddamn song, dude. Trial by Fire. That's a great song. The rest of that first album is filler as fuck. And then what's the other album? Suspended animation and shit. The um Michael Jackson on vocals. I mean, and then that comeback shit. We're back. Been around for 40 years. Get lost, poser. Go back to church. No, you haven't. What are you talking about? You were gone for at least fucking 20 years. Hell, I think it was way over 20 years. I mean, when was that suspended animation and they did an EP around there? Was it Fear No Evil or some shit like that? I know that's a Grim Reaper album, but I mean, think of something called along those lines as well. Um, I think it was like 87, 88 when it came out. And I, to my knowledge, and granted, I'm not a Satan super fan, as you can tell if I'm not making that abundantly clear, that that was the last thing they did. And then when did they reform? I mean, when did they reform? Was it like 2009, maybe? I mean, dude, they were gone for like damn near 30 goddamn years. Um, and they're pulling up, been around 40 years. Like, fucking hell you have, bro town. Dude, that's worse than the goddamn, the Archgoats and then the Misfits pulling with their shit. Uh, they had more of a goddamn delay than they did. But, and again, I, I honestly think that is, none of their shit sucks. It's not shut it off, but it is overrated. as goddamn fuck. And I, 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 I firmly strong. I'm going to get a shirt that prints it. And it smokes. Fucking uh, Satan again. Change that name. You're not even down with the goddamn devil. You're down with that pussy boy fucking Christ. Change your name to goddamn Christ. That's what you're into. Down with the devil and Satan is what we're into, goddamn it. That's the name we use. Not even into him. Fucking goddamn disgraceful as fuck. Hell, even watch my goddamn first Paul Lenny goddamn interview. He, he's, they're Christians? Man, you could, yeah, you could just see the goddamn disappointment in his fucking face. Oh, man. It's fucking you know, kids that's found out Santa Claus is goddamn fucking fake, right? Yeah, I know. It's disappointing as fuck. Like, what the hell are you goddamn using that goddamn name for? So, And it's all these people, too, that uh, maybe not nowadays, everybody's a goddamn poser, but it's all these people that love those mad as fuck Satan albums that also don't like the 90s albums by Merciful Fate, King Diamond. Again, 90s Merciful Fate, King Diamond albums destroy fucking Christian, a.k.a. Satan. Sent him off to the morgue, burnt to a crisp, carcass style. You can't even put the toe tags on because the goddamn toes were singed the fuck off. They had to put the ta toes over the goddamn foot. I mean, the tags over the foot, not even on the toes. Toes singed completely off. That's how much those goddamn fate and king, king elms fucking smoke those fucking posers. Comes with singed over the blue. Later, goddamn 